Welcome back to this strawberry hanging trough video series. This is going to end a little bit differently than we expected. It's definitely the final video for this series and the outcome was a little bit unexpected. So stay tuned. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are aquaponics.ai, growpockets.com, trueaquaponics.com, and glassbottleoutlet.com. Thanks for your support. Just like with my prototype, I pre-drilled and tapped holes, and they're spaced every foot from each other. And then this can just slide right into the end of the trough. This is just a sample cover that I cut off just to make sure my spacing was okay. So what's happening underneath this is down the center is the main pipe. And originally the plan was to um, put one of these in every foot along the pipe just like this. And the, the spray was gonna shoot out at the plant something like this in this area. What I'm thinking about doing is just orienting, instead of it shooting directly at the plant like this, uh, aim more towards the other plant or even go straight down the center line. That way the uh, spray pattern is going to shoot out more of an angle like this and cover this whole area. And then likewise, this one would cover this area. And that way, if one of these nozzles gets clogged up and it's no longer working, this plant, it's getting uh, spray from two locations instead of just the one. So if this nozzle fails or clogs up, the plants will still be getting water from the opposite direction uh, from the alternating nozzle. So I think I'll get a better coverage versus just shooting these two dedicated for this nozzle and these two dedicated to this nozzle. Um, we'll basically getting four plants uh, per nozzle instead. Uh, it's good to have a little redundancy, especially something like this. If that fails, it won't take very long for those roots to dry out. I'm still not 100% sure how the flow is going to go uh, through 30 feet of one inch pipe. So I'm, instead of gluing these together, I just uh, pre-drilled a couple holes in the coupling and oops, I'll use a couple of stainless steel screws to hold them together. If it leaks a little bit, it's not a big deal. This whole area is wet. The original plan, I was going to have this piping in here for the drain and have that a two inch piping going all the way down to act as the drain system. And now that I have my sprayers in here, I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore and just have the water go down to the bottom and follow along here. I just think uh, that drain is gonna clog up too much. On the uh, supply side, I set this elbow in at a slight angle so that way when it's plumbed in, the piping will rest against the edge here. This whole assembly is going to be top heavy so by doing that I can anchor that here and, and keep it all anchored nicely. So I have everything installed in the second trough. I'm not sure. I got a couple of these uh, sitting at a weird angle but I'm not going to redo it. I'm not going to waste it on piping. It's just spraying water so I'm not going to cause any issues. And I've made up a whole bunch of uh, top sections for this and all these are cut out on my CNC. I could have done it just with a hole saw and a razor knife cutting it out, but CNC is far more accurate, especially dealing with repetitive pieces like this. It just all go in like that. This one's a little tight. There you go. 
I've really been procrastinating on this next part of the project and it's just dealing with the drain in general. Um, originally the intent was to have grow beds underneath this uh, but I haven't built them yet so I gotta get the drain someplace else. Uh, so what I did was I got this um, corrugated electrical conduit because it's really cheap. It's not the highest of quality but it makes a good temporary uh, tubing and it's also flexible. And then I was going to attach it on um, to these uh, one inch uh, fittings. Unfortunately a one inch piece of conduit is not the same as a one inch uh, water plumbing and they don't uh, fit together at all. So what I did was I cheated and I chucked one of these up in my lathe and uh, turned all the barbs off and just made it smooth. It's not dealing with any pressure or anything so that can now fit into here and I can just attach it on with a um, hose clamp and that will do just fine. Well, I guess that will work. I made up this template, which is the shape of the greenhouse, and I'm going to attempt to bend this pipe. It's a little soft on this side already, so it may not fit in a fitting anymore. Move it down a hair. Well, it's not some of my best work, but I got this more or less to the right shape. Bending isn't one of my strong points. I don't have much of a patience waiting for everything to heat up and do what it needs to do. just putting the pump in the deep water culture bed. I could have tied it into uh, my pipe that fills this deep water culture bed, but it was just easier just to drop it into here versus putting a tap or cutting that line and inserting a T into it. For the next bend, I had actually purchased a, a piece of adjustable elbow where you just cut it off at the right angle and then you slip on this piece at, at once you cut it and you can make this any angle that you want but it's just as easy to uh, bend this at this point these are about ten dollars a piece from McMaster so I'm just going to uh, bend this I drew out what the arch was and what my angle is supposed to be so I'm just gonna heat this up and uh, bend it over let that cool in place. The last section that will actually feed the water to each of the troughs, I'm just going to install a gate valve that will go to each one and that way I can adjust the flow a little bit if I need to. These actually work fairly well for something like this. I've been looking for some really flexible hose that could handle a little pressure and haven't had much luck so I'm going to use this uh, eighth inch wall tubing. It's fairly flexible but it does kink if you get a bad angle on it so we're going to try it and see what happens. I also forgot to buy uh, some hose clamps so we're going to try just testing it just without the clamps, we'll see if they blow off, but I'll get some and add them on later on. All 
I have a problem with the corrugated pipe where it meets in with this. I just couldn't seal it up, so I'm gonna have to come up with some method. Well, while I was testing this, the belt started slipping on one end with the uneven weight, and even though I have those teeth in the belts, they started hopping over the, the pulleys, so one end decided to move and the other end didn't, and it just uh, ripped itself apart. So obviously I have a lot more design considerations to deal with than I thought. So there's really three main things that uh, caused the failure of this system. Uh, first is my little pulley design. I really should have uh, set the set screws so they actually go through the uh, conduit. Um, just setting them, they do slip around the conduit. It's a fairly easy solution, just drill some holes in there. And I think in the earlier video I may have mentioned that I should have done that. Uh, but I just didn't. So once you get a lot of weird force on these, uh, there's there's a lot of torque on those pulleys, so they uh, do twist on the conduit, so they don't uh, all pull on the conduit evenly. And somewhat related to the pulleys, um, with these troughs, um, I had one that was not set perfectly um, at a good slope, so I actually had some water accumulating in the center of it instead of the end. And then on the other trough at the end, the water wasn't leaving it quite fast enough, so there's a lot of weight on that far end. And by having uh, two different weight distributions on it, one in the center and one on the end, it actually created like this uh, torquing of the whole system. So the middle of one side wanted to go down and the end of the other side wanted to go down and it sort of twisted the whole thing. And that's what actually what you can hear um, during the failure um, is the belts uh, just slipping over the pulleys as one side was pulling one way and one side was pulling the other. Um, so that's probably one of the main issues that I have with this is um, I greatly underestimated uh, the teeth on these pulleys not holding on. I think if I had actually gone with the expanded shale in these, there would have been so much weight in them that uh, the belt wouldn't be able to hop over the pulleys, but um, I didn't want to handle that much weight in here. So I got rid of that expanded shale and made them very light, which then of course makes it very easy for the belts to uh, pop, hop over the pulleys. And also related to this whole thing is uh, filling both troughs at the same time um, off the same water stream. Um, if one trough is a little bit lower than the other, uh, that tends to make the water go into that pipe uh, a little bit quicker. And by doing that, it makes uh, the water flow faster in that trough, which then accumulates more water, which then pushes it down. So it sort of gets caught in this uh, loop where if one trough is lower than the other, it just gets a lot more weight in it and it pulls it down even harder. And then once one trough is down all the way, the top trough really doesn't get much water. Uh, so that was a failure too. Um, in hindsight, I had thought about getting a, a six-way valve and just filling one trough at a time. And then as uh, one trough fills, it will weight it down and actually move it down on its own. and Sort of create a, a teeter-tottering effect where the uh, troughs can keep uh, moving back and forth automatically. And that's sort of uh, another reason why I had made uh, that uh, brake system, just to keep these troughs from moving too fast. So that's about it. I have a couple ideas on uh, some other ways, so I may be able to salvage some of this, but for the most part, uh, Unfortunately, this uh, particular design was sort of a failure. Um, a little disappointed that it worked out this way, but um, hanging these up overhead, I think it would have worked if I had uh, done some design changes. I may revisit uh, this particular design, but I have a few other uh, tricks up my sleeve that I may want to try out in the future. I appreciate you hanging out through this whole series. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too disappointing for you to see that there really wasn't a good end result. Uh, we learned a lot along the way um, how to make those uh, sprayers. Uh, that actually works really well for a clog-free sprayer. I learned how to do some plastic welding with this uh, thin plastic and that worked out uh, fairly well. 
and uh, I also learned a lot on what not to do with a design like this. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.